talked about, uh, you know, My Myers-Briggs, Myers-Briggs uh, uh, personality tests. Yeah. You heard of them? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, I, mean, I mean, sort of, well, just as I'm going back a little bit, I, um, a few days ago, you know, I, I sort of asked my um, uh, which daughter, I um, forget, um, one of my daughters, uh, in, in Indonesia, I sort of asked her if she'd ever done her Myers-Briggs. And uh, she said, yes, I'm an, an INFJ. Uh, and I thought, well, that's strange. So am I. And so I, I asked um, another daughter, another Indonesian daughter, you know, what she was. And she didn't know. She said, I said, Look, I'll just go do this test. She come back, oh, it says INFJ. And you know, this is a bit, no, I'm just not quite believing this. You know, are they sort of doing the wrong tests or what? So, so I got onto my daughter in, in Australia and uh, asked her, and she happened to know, because she's sort of been under psychiatric counseling for years, just like all my children. So, um, <laughs> uh, and she said, INFJ. And I thought, what the hell is going on? Uh, I mean, I'd, you know, I'd known about Myers-Briggs for years. That's sort of interesting, you know. It's, uh, you know, it can be useful. Uh, but to, to sort of have, what, three daughters, and three, three daughters, and I haven't counted the rest yet. You know, so you know, three, these are three daughters from, from three different mothers. You know, so there's only one genetic link. So, you know, there's just, I just can't believe that all these, the, you know, that, that, they, that, that, that there could not be some sort of genetic link between, between you know, personality and, 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 and genetics, which is something I hadn't actually believed until, until now. I mean, I'd always sort of, you know, deliberately downplayed the role of genetics in, in sort of, you know, uh, you know, personality and all that. Uh, but all of a sudden, it sort of you know, just sort of well, uh, well, and not only that, but my best friend, the, perhaps the only other person I speak to apart from yourselves, INFJ. You know, it's just I just can't believe. Um, you have to you have to explain what INFJ means. Oh, sorry. It's it's just a, it's just a, the sixteen personality types under this Myers Briggs. Uh, How many? Sixteen. 16. One, uh, six. You have, yeah, now, now all of, you know, and, and they're just sort of, you know, they've got different designations, you know, you've got the introversion, extroversion, feeling, and intuition, uh, a whole lot of other things. And it comes down to a four-letter code. And, and in my ah, case, right, right, right. It's, it's INFJ, uh, which is apparently the, the, the rarest of all, or rare, 2% of all people have you know, uh, uh, of that particular type in this framework. Uh, are you there? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. No, it's my, in there. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, no, I'm... My, my computer's just gone down. Yeah, you... Uh, you uh, uh, okay. Oh, oh yes. no, there you are. Okay. Yeah, we got a frozen and a moving one. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, that's, that's smoky, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I can't do anything about it, so... <laughs> Because computer's frozen. Well, I can only well, just see your sperm is punching through. <laughs> well, it's not that, well, well, you can't be well, Louis' friend. That's weird, you know. <laughs> my best friend. Now, that is peculiar. Well, Mind you, I suppose, I mean, but why, yeah, I mean, but you then, I suppose, you sort of naturally have, you make friends with people who have similar personalities, similar interests, I suppose. Well, the, th the thing is that INFJs are supposed to be, you know, the rarest of, of the personality types, about 2% of the population or something like that. And so, you know, statistically, it's, it's not common to sort of come across them. I mean, I, mean, I, I think of the INFJs as sort of an, an evolutionary dead end. You know, that's, that's where all, the, that's where all the, the ones going out are going. Well, you will have done a good, good deal against that. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, so I'm sort of fighting Best back. Best effort. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm fighting back and... Spread it, darling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, 
So, and it, well, where was I going with that? There was a, a purpose. I was, I've lost it. Uh, that, what, I was going somewhere yeah, with this. Okay, <laughs> well, how did we go there? You don't go out much. You don't have an interest yeah, in that's monuments. Okay. That's what's well, the line. INF, yeah, INFJ, that's just, you know, typical behavior. That they're just, they're, they're, they're not, well, if, if you ever read up on them, you'll see that they're, you know, they're difficult. Really difficult. You know, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to wish it on on, on your best friend. <laughs> well, that explains <laughs> everything, <laughs> Gary. Exactly, it does. <laughs> it does indeed. <laughs> Which is why it's rather concerns me that I seem seem to be both breeding them and and uh, be being surrounded <laughs> by them with my friends. I thought, what the hell is going on? Well, maybe. Well, what what are you, Elfie? Well, have you have you yeah. done one of these tests? Uh, yes, but I don't know. I, um, I, I'm. It, it can be interesting. I so I've never done mine. I uh, and I. Um, lots of people have done them the, in the, uh, the the in the workshops. I met lots of people because it's very standard. You know, if you're a business a person in business, you go to any mm -hmm. kind of personal development thing, you get one of these. Mm -hmm. And I've seen so much misuse of them because in our mindset, we can't help but getting critical and judgmental about whatever we find there, which might not be the, you know, they always stress that that's not what it's for. It's only just to see clearly what you are and, and none is better than the other. But I haven't yet met the person. Gary, you might, you might be the one. Uh, but in the workshops, I have not met anyone who didn't use uh, the results of these tests to to beat themselves over with you know with whatever they are lacking in. So they <laughs> did they didn't see it as a an enhancement. They just ah there you know. And often they are used in a, a recruitment process, and so you know that they are used for judge, judging people. You know, mm -hmm. will you be a good leader or not? Will you be a fabulous? Um, department boss or not, and and uh, and then people get rejected for roles because of the results of these tests. So do you tell me if there's judgment going on or not? You know. So it, I have had so many bruised, really, you know, depressed guys most often um, in in those workshops that that never got over the results of their tests because they were presented to them in a recruitment pr process and say ah oh, we can't we can't have you for that role because look at your test you know it's really tough stuff so i'm mm -hmm. i'm i'm not a fan if it's used in that way and myers briggs in the, it it is it has very little um, um, uh, scientific foundation. It, you know, it was devised by these two women uh, over the kitchen table. <laughs> and it, it, um, and it, they say it's based on Jung, but Jung uh, interviewed people and then made, made those, in, you know, they, he had great insight. He really knew how to how to interview people and then made those assessments. Mm -hmm. Whereas Myers-Briggs is a self-assessment thing. So immediately problem. what actually Myers-Briggs follows up on is not what you really, are. if you would think of it in a mindful way, it's not what others see and what you, how you are in the world, but how you see yourself. So all your complexes will be there. Either because, you know, very often people say, oh, I really wanted to know. So I was very, very honest. And so their complexes, their inner turmoil gets vastly exaggerated in the results of this mm -hmm. test. So what you actually get is your worst self. You know, the <laughs> one that you have always beaten yourself up about. And it's mm -hmm. devastating. And everyone yeah. else, or you know, now often in, in the workshops, everyone says, What? You? 
you know, and and they don't know this person that that has been coming out of. But but we always we always suck us for tests like that, and we always suck us for our own internal complexes. So meaning, you know, oh, I'm so bad at this, and I will defend that to my deathbed. When everyone else says, actually, you're really quite good at it, you know, we don't trust others, only my own internal stuff that might be hugely warped by just having had this or that bad experience or comment or whatever that I heard when I was 10. You know, I, that, and, and, and no one else will know you like that. And you might act in the world and be in the world, Heidegger would say, very very differently and 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 but but you rather believe this inner story of you and when you will not believe if someone else says well actually i know you as quite this or that you know you would say no 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 if you knew what was going on in here you wouldn't think that you know mm -hmm. this is the real me my story of me it's and that will come out. So what you get with a test like that is your inner story about yourself. That's all I can say. And I don't trust that very much. And isn't that what yeah. mindfulness is all about? Yeah, you know, well, the, the, the other thing is presumably, I mean, I, I think I did one of these, but I don't remember its name because I'm not regular memory. And when I was at on the university as some part of a, team building exercise mm. when we had a new team of people and everybody went off and did this long test and then they came back and we sort of discussed the different personalities or the different traits that we were good and bad at and the one thing that I don't think it sort of I sort of knew what I was good and bad at and one of the things was I was terrible at finishing things I was very good at starting things and hopeless at getting anything done and actually i think i've changed now i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm actually quite good at, i quite enjoy finishing things so presumably this these traits are not you know they just they change i mean you're you we change over time so i, I, I think well you do change and i, I think you know if you do if you do these this I mean, it's a crude test. I mean, you, you're basically, yeah, the, the resolution of this particular type of test is very crude uh, and, and only useful to a certain extent. Uh, I, I only found it useful to the extent that, um, uh, I guess, you know, recognizing my introversion and sort of saying, oh, well, so it's not a bad thing. You know, <laughs> so I, I basically feeling that, you know, it's okay. It's, 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 it's not something which I need to do something about necessarily, uh, you know, but, you know, but yeah, you can change. People do change. Um, and I, so I can't see that it, that it could be set in stone. Um, and I mean, any, there's plenty of other measures of, of uh, uh, you know, personality and, and uh, you know, psychology and, 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 and things like that. And, you know, all of them have their limitations. And if you, if, if you take them, too far and too seriously, they become, well, they, they become astrology. <laughs> well, I was interested, you sent the link to a film. Um, oh, yeah. And I, I watched it just now, just before, just this morning, because I thought, oh, I better do my homework. And uh, I, it was a bit weird. I mean, it, was, it wasn't a very good film. But no. it was a very, it didn't go anywhere. It was sort of um, as if it was going, it sort of had some bits that sounded as though they were going to be interesting, but then mm -hmm. didn't, didn't, they didn't sort of end up anywhere. They, it, it, and it, it sort of petered out, really. Well, it didn't go anywhere. It, there was no resolution. It just sort of, and I think that for me that was sort of well because I I guess I know I knew a, bit, a little bit about about the history of what happened after that right and and the and the the, the problems of uh, guruism and uh, you know you know 
spiritual leaders sort of going you know, out of control. And that's a, a typical pattern. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I guess yeah, for me, it just seemed to be relevant only, I guess only because I've been sort of doing so much, well, uh, reading and, and, and watching videos of, of uh, men and violence, uh, especially organized violence in terms of warfare. Uh, yeah, that, that, that sort of came at the end of that. And it sort of seemed to tie together that, you know, these people in these same situations and these same sort of, you know, situations of war and, and chaos, you know, trying to find a path, trying to find a, a way to civilization. Um, you know, and, and yeah, so yeah, I, I just found it very interesting uh, in terms of the lessons that, that, it, that it might have for, you know, for other, other people who, profess some sort of spiritual path and uh, how wrong it can go. You know, and, and I guess, you know, thinking about, uh, well, just to use an example, you know, a, a Stephen Batchelor, um, and, you know, and I'm not, not saying that he would <laughs> go this way, I don't think he ever would, but the, the, you can see the potential is there and how it can happen, uh, that people, in a sort of say, you know, invest so much into, into to what, one particular person is saying and, and, and sort of see that you know, everything that person is saying seems to be correct. I cannot see fault in it. And, uh, and, and because it's only one person, it becomes a, you know, a singular focus. And that's something actually, I, I even mentioned that to, uh, uh, to, to Martin um, um, last year. And the fact that, you know, I find it concerning that I find it very difficult to find anything to disagree with in Stephen's work. Um, I find that disturbing because, because well, I, not disturbing, I find it I'm uneasy. About um, so I've, I've, I guess I've been trying to fault find and sort of find you know, what's wrong with this. There's got to be something wrong. Uh, but, but of course, it's actually nothing wrong. Uh, well, except if you want to quibble about it, there's actually nothing really wrong with, uh, with, uh, with Stephen's approach. What might could be, what I now think might be considered to be a problem is the scoping, is the fact that it's, it's narrowly scoped within, within you know, a specific uh, uh, early Buddhist framework and, and, it, and it can't easily move outside of that, of that framework, even, though, even if you know, simultaneously Acknowledging that the, the role of other Dharmic philosophers, you know, such as the Stoics and Epicureans and whatnot. So you know, it was that that, was that yeah, lessons in guruism is, is I guess what what I got out of that film. Right, I understand now. I'm I'm with you, and I I agree with your um, analysis of the scoping because if there's if there's one thing that that's come to me over the, the year of not being on the course afterwards is, is that <clears throat> how it's an approach and that there are others which could be beneficial if were, if integrated and if, if considered. Yeah, I think that's my, my yeah. What so, do you think, Elfie? Brett. Sorry. Um, well, when I say, you know, like I said before, when Stephen, you know, comes up with something, I really consider it or I, I follow mm. it. Um, but I, I, it's not that I agree with everything he says. I just find it very interesting what he says. I always mm. think that it is worth considering. I, so I rate him highly for that. It, to agree with him or not is that smells of guruism, and and that's not what I'm after. So it's not mm -hmm. like oh, you believe everything what he says. I can't for starters because I'm a woman, and I don't think that that aspect, you know. And, and I got alerted to that by Maria 
really. And mm -hmm. uh, mostly, you know, yeah. she has a sharp radar for that. And she picked him up again and again as a male, you know, and said, hang on a minute there. I really, I really uh, value that because my radar wasn't so sharp there. And I don't want to over egg it, you know, it's just one little aspect of many, many, many. But uh, so <coughs> as a woman, I can really not say, I hang on your lips, darling. You know, it's not about that. It, but I do rate everything that does come over your lips worth considering. Mm -hmm. I will battle it or, or, or I will find it that it is worth um, engaging with. In that way, I will follow, but not in the way of, oh, he said something. It, might, you know, it, it comes to me as a, as a ready-made re oven-ready belief. Like <laughs> It's really not like that. I yeah. often find that ah, that's how you say it. Um, hmm. Um, but and I, but in the engagement with it, I always find that terribly rich in, and and mm -hmm. worthwhile. But you yeah. know, we disagree about a lot of about Heidegger and 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 things mm -hmm. how he sees it, and he sees it as mm -hmm. an Englishman, and I see it as a as a German woman. So there, there we have, you know, quite, a, quite immediately a grating there where, I, where we value things quite differently. And, mm -hmm. and um, so my, my earliest experience with him is the intrigue about what he says and the total interest and inspiration, whilst also finding slightly different things when I look into it from mm -hmm. him. Well, what's not to like, you know, because I, yeah. I, that is enriching for me. But as yeah. a guru, I, I, it is not very good material you know, for me, for me <laughs> personally. As a guru, yeah. you know, like, oh, everything he says yeah. is just so. I, well, that, that's not my orientation anyway. I, yeah. I don't think I will ever find someone like that. You know, I'm basically yeah. most... It, most impressed by myself and uh, so <laughs> I don't know no one can get the top spot here. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but what, well, well, there wasn't, um, yeah. <laughs> oh. It'll be interesting on the, on the new course as to see how, um, thinking has changed both from Stephen's perspective and if there's a few of us on the course which I know there will be how people's perspective will have changed because I, I say oh, I yeah who will be I, who will be on it what do you know uh well it's, um I know that who do I know Glenn has signed up okay and he told me that two others had signed up. Um, poof. But I can't remember which ones. Uh, oh, I know. Um, one is um, um, Sven and somebody. Is, I think it was Sven that told me. Um, might be Pete. I think I think it's those three. So, um, so that so that at least some um, um, of us. It, it was when I sent that I sent an email to everybody to say that this is where the videos are, and um, Glenn and Sven both wrote back, and they both said that they'd signed up, and there was somebody else. So, mm -hmm. so it will be interesting, as I say, to see how the thinking has changed on on all sides because i know i can see mine has you've got a bit of time to to assimilate other avenues so i've done a you know because i've done a lot of reading and stuff and and you think well actually yeah this this makes sense now and this sort of fits in and um mm. 
I, I have a horrible feeling I could become more contrary though than than even than I'm used to being. So we'll see. There's this. There's this. Anal sorry. There's an analogy with Kepler, who um, was both a fabulous astrologist and one of the first astronomers. Mm. And he, so he developed astronomy um, and whilst earning his living with astrology. He was very, very acclaimed, you know, and all the, the, the it was the best and the kings and queens of Europe wanted to have him on their case about, you know, how, if they had the good fortune for projects and stuff. And um, that's how he was rated. And um, that's, that's how he uh, fed his family. But all the while he was developing uh, astronomy and he, he did not, it, it seems like he, he, he did not have a conflict there. He kind of could do both and he had a foot in both worlds. Um, and, and, you know, he set the foundation for astronomy, uh, you know, for one of the greatest minds of all time, I guess. And, uh, and, but he, he, had, he had that kind of mythology and, and it, it didn't harm him, you know, it didn't, didn't hamper him in that way. Uh, not, uh, not of what can be achieved in one lifetime, like. Because you have to study so much, don't you? You have to have mm -hmm. such a bulk. You have to have so many hours of study and understanding behind you. You can only get that far in 70, 80 years. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but can you be that, that bridge, like, perhaps, you know? Maybe, maybe Stephen is in a, in a role like that. It's, it, you know, not everyone needs to do everything. He, he's one of those people who can bring it out of of the mythology in into mm -hmm. a science, perhaps. You know, others like like John Kabat-Zinn have tried this, but they are they, when you really press them, they flip back into mm -hmm. their Buddhism. Uh, well, they well, actually they don't need to flip back; they never left it. So. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are others that try or give lip service to the same thing, bringing mindfulness into the secular context, but it is wafer thin. Yeah. I think what, mm -hmm. what Stephen has done is much more fundamental of a questioning and openness. If you get John Kabat-Zinn on, you know, if you talk, let him talk about Buddha, you can get his wrath in no time, you know, because you're not re the real thing, because you're not a Buddhist. And I don't think mm -hmm. Stephen would even consider that. So, so mm -hmm. he has stretched so much more. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Amazing, you know. What do we do with this platform? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think as I uh, might have mentioned before, that that I think the I, I guess that, that there's you know no problem in in, in doing these courses, in, in, in course because you know we do learn things, of course. But the the problem for me, I guess, is that that it's not discursive. It's, it's highly limited to a particular, a very, very small group of people. It, it's uh, not really public domain in terms of, you know, what, what is said and, and, and done. And that, that sort of comes back to the problems of uh, gurus. And, uh, and, and when, I, when I say gurus, I just mean teachers. Okay, I'll call them teachers because that's, that's what they are. Guru in Indonesian means teacher. That's what it is. It's nothing special. Um, but uh, I, I'm just, yeah, what, where was I? Um, oh, God. The memory's going. Um, Stay with that dope and look what happens to you. I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'm like, I'm like this constantly. I've been like this for years. <laughs> I'm getting worse. I am getting worse. Um, my short-term short memory is, is, is appalling. It's quite bad. Uh, but that's been like that for years. You know, it, it doesn't seem to be improving much. 
Uh, but where was I going with it? What was I talking about? Where am I? What are we doing here? <laughs> I think I know. I think I, I sort of understand your, your. You were talking about the 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 problems with. Well, I think maybe the problems the that there the fact that this the, this course and these courses generally because they're run by a teacher, there is a sense that they are a sort of not not guru because it doesn't make sense. But I mean that they are something that that is top down that you are given. And then yeah. because there isn't a discursive aspect to it, or that isn't central, that there is a, a sense of it, the impart, imparting information, imparting knowledge, rather than knowledge emerging from discussion. Yeah. Well, Th you, you need to do both. You need to do both, of course. Of course. Uh, but, but, I, I, uh, but the thing is, if, what I was actually about to say about, you know, about, about teachers is that they, they guard their material. I mean, you, you may not have noticed this, but but you know, and it's not not only you know Stephen. But, you know, there's many many authors who do the same thing. You know, if they do courses that come out of their books, they they, they really try and limit the distribution of, of the material that they're they're talking about you know, for, for for at least one or two years, uh, because what they know that once it gets onto the internet and starts doing the rounds, you know. People will come to their courses now, be talking about exactly the same things, and, and people will be saying, "Well, why do I bother coming here? You're talking about the same things you did on YouTube." And so, and so you know, there's a, a proprietary um, uh, you know, that they, they guard their copyright, which you know I think is a a problem, a definite problem um, for for this in, in particular for for discussion around Dharma. Uh, that, that, that if you have a, a um, you know, if you close source your your teaching material, uh, then you know probably you know because you're basically trying to protect your 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 income, you know, your, you know, your and that, that 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 of course you know for, for a lot of teachers is all they've got. If you let that material out too much, then then it's no longer unique, and people will you know it, when when and if they come to your courses will be disappointed because they're, they're not hearing anything new. They've so, seen it all before on, uh, uh, on the internet. Uh, yeah, I, so I agree. Like, I think it's this, and, this commodification of, of, yes. of knowledge. And, uh, yeah. and, um, and the, yeah, I just, I'm in fact, I, it's why, you now when I, I know this, this course, right, 250 quid, well, you think that's well, not much money, but actually it is money and it it does lots of things it makes it exclusive it limits people um and it makes it top down it makes it a delivery whereas if you were saying well well it's it's i don't know 20 pounds because that's the admin fee for paying for the zoom or whatever it's going to be then it's open and it's discursive and it's not top down it's it's it is Yes, I there's information which we can share, but it is one of the and it's the nature of the structure of the thing. And you're quite right; it's because I consider this, you know, th this is me making money. This is how I earn my keep. You have to pay me, and it. I'm I'm not sure it works where we're just dealing with knowledge. I mean, I could justify it as a lecturer in a university because I'm offering lots of things. I'm offering facilities. Um, I'm offering lots of structure. Um, there's lots of background, other things that you're getting. It's not just knowledge. And it's also the opportunity to work with others. But I'm not sure you can, I can justify it in the same way if I'm dealing with, with sharing a broader range of information. Mm. I've really thought this through. But, um, well, I think you can see um, my point. And the, also, I don't need, I, you know, and I, the other thing is, is, do you need the money? I mean, that's the thing. I, it's, it's, do you need the money? Because Stephen said at one stage, well, I make quite a lot of money from my selling my books. Mm -hmm. So... Um, well, you know, right. I'm, I'm not sort of begrudging him uh, his money. 
uh, and you know, people have got to earn a living and he's got his pension to think about, his old age to think about. He, he may or may not be well you know, accommodated. Uh, so you know, it's not the actual money that, that's the actual problem. I mean, I think you know, teachers deserve to be paid. It's not a problem. Uh, the question, I guess, is how do you do that in a way uh, that encourages you know, discourse as, as a consequence of that, that teaching? Um, I mean, uh, rather than making a, a privileged sort of knowledge, you know, uh, you know, making it much more open, uh, you know, would uh, in increase the amount of uh, discourse, uh, increase and, and greatly increase the number of, of uh, the amount of awareness of, 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 of dynamic thinking. And, and I think, you know, the, the discourse is, is, well, I guess for me, it, that's what it's all about. I mean, obviously the, the teaching is central, but unless people know about it then, uh, and, and know how to apply it, then, then you know, we, we might as well be, you know, I don't know, talking into, 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 into open space, you know, it's, uh, and I guess all, you know, it's probably you know, partly a product of you know, the, you know, the Buddhist lineage, the, the British, Buddhist sort of, uh, you know, in, in the West, the way, the way that things are done. You, you've got a guru, you've got, you've got students, they, they sit down, they listen, they go. Uh, that, that's you know, the typical mod, model. In, in, but uh, to have you know, discourse and, and argument and, and, uh, and you know, and to have people question. Um, you know, that's a much noisier sort of environment, of course, um, you know, but I find it much more productive. And, and, uh, and without that discourse, I really can't see the point. Yeah, I, I agree, absolutely. And it, it, it's more difficult to justify that from a, a, being a teacher you know, you, because of the position, you're not really a teacher. What you are is, I don't, know, I don't like the word facilitator, but you are facilitating the discourse. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would like to see this become, that, because I think that's, that's what we do. I mean, we, there's no, we don't have a, nobody facilitates, but we are interested in the ideas and the discussion of the ideas, and it's through the discussion that further ideas emerge, and that, that we that we are we refine um, areas, and we become perhaps more dismissive of other areas which we reject. So that comes through this the, the discourse. Mm -hmm. So I would see much more. I would like to see much more that it's, yeah, it's the setting up of those that discourse and the direction, which really is is more of what education is in certainly in universities. It, that's what happens because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to see how things emerge, and because you don't know, as I said, you don't know the answers. So the only way to have things progress is through a very open discussion and a directed discussion where you can provide some insights because you know well that yes we've already discussed that we've already been down that and we've realized that's a dead end that isn't it so you can help in that way but you're not helping you can't help by providing truths you can't help all you can really do is is to guide from previous understanding and even that you have to question because you've got to make sure that you know that yes even though it was discussed even though we went down there yes i'm right to think that that's it's wasted time to go over that again we need we can be more productive by pursuing a different direction mm. and that, that's all all of that is what i found very frustrating about the course last time in that mm. um, there was nothing like enough of of that approach because i felt the course last time was whilst there were lots of interesting things it could have been a lot more interesting it could have been mm -hmm. a lot more productive um 
Yeah. And that's really, I think, needs to, that's, needs to break out. We need to break out from that. Because otherwise, it, it is um, just just listening to somebody interesting who's very clever, um, but they're not really going anywhere. Well, I, I would really like to know much more concretely what you're thinking of there, because you, you have such experience as a lecturer, as, as you know, with your background, uh, you have uh, very clear ideas of how this could get better. And um, that's very valuable because, you know, I'm a, I'm someone who only does ever these these one to one consultations in essence, and I don't have the the experience uh, what works, how to set this up, what is even possible. I don't have that that span in my head, you know. So I'm, and others might not have either. This is a very specific skill and knowledge that you have, and it's not widespread. So it's it. Uh, I I always you know I'm, I'm interested in you sharing how and you say it could be so much better. How, you know? I um, well, I, I was impressed with our little breakout group. <laughs> they are your starting point, and I was yeah. already impressed coming from the uh, week re re long retreats where you just sit there and listen at the best of times and mostly don't say anything and don't try to think anything <laughs> you know so so it's it is it it's you might it might be obvious to you it's not to me and i'm really interested and you might I, want to share these experiences because they're well, rare i i suppose that it's because i was a lecturer in design and design is an, an interesting Field. I think it's interesting. It's an interesting field because it involves both arts and sciences. It, it, you, it's, you have to have practical outcomes, or you don't have to, but often you have practical outcomes. But in order to get to practical outcomes, you, you pursue a creative approach. You don't know this key thing with all design activities. You have no idea what the outcome is when you start, and you have to sort of trust that there might be one. So you, you, it's, it's not knowledge that you have and are, are imparting. It's about a process that you allow and you, um, you, you try and germinate and you try and let flourish. And by imposing certain constraints, minor constraints on the process, then you refine the outcome you 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 some things are possible some things are not possible and you can do that by experimentation and you can do that by testing so that's where the sort of more scientific logical rational approach comes in but in order to have something unique have something novel have something different have something useful you have to be creative and which is the opposite of using science in a way because you are sort of saying anything is possible so you start from a position of all things being possible and then you slowly refine you use this sort of uh, you, you you impose uh, constraints and that so in order to to teach that teach in inverted commas you you set up a a, a, a sort of a construct and you and you get used to a way of working, which allows that to happen, and it becomes eventually. It just it sort of just becomes a way of thinking. It becomes this is a way of to taking two different approaches and allowing them to work together. So taking the op completely open ended creative um, where anything is possible, and then. The, the the fixed result and and mo using both of them at the same time in different measures at different times when one is more appropriate than the other and that's what design education is that's that's how if it and it's the difference between say if you were on a fine art course where it doesn't matter what you do because everything becomes a, a to do with the self and to do with communication. 
and the communication aspects of it would be the where the constraints are but generally you don't really need those either so it can, can be completely open-ended or on an engineering course where if you do civil engineering then the important thing is the bridges don't fall down um and there isn't a great deal of you know creative aspect to it so there's it there is it's small it's restrained because the constraints are so big whereas in design you have both you have you have to and it's the marriage of the both which makes it um, different and under for me makes it more more interesting but I think it can be applied it's applied actually to lots of different things because mm -hmm. if you think about if you were writing a novel for instance you have to have both you you have a product at the end you have a fixed thing which has to have grammar syntax spelling structure whatever but you also have to be obviously you have to have the creative element in the first place for it to be a novel and be to be novel <laughs> so um anyway so that. well that's what i mean it's very specific knowledge you know and and it it is not out there necessarily i would love to experiment more i i remember i went to this um before COVID, I went to this Oxford Mindfulness Week. So it was for everyone. Actually, they threw it open to everyone who was interested. Originally, it was meant for people who'd done the courses in the, the, to be teachers in the eight-week mindfulness um, interventions. And um, but, well, it was meant for that, but actually everyone could apply. And so there were lots of people who had just ever kind of read a book on mindfulness and thought it was a good idea or only got went halfway through if that uh, so it was a very very mixed audience of people who taught it to people who who had uh, mindfulness turn up on the internet sometime so and and they tried in order to get it more interactive so they they devised these breakout groups right so that you could choose one they, they had maybe six themes of interest and so they would run in parallel you could find your group that was also interested in this particular um, uh, theme subject to discuss and what what happened was that maybe there were maybe 20 people around a table that were to were interested in this particular subject 20 people around a table so the upshot of that is that one or two people pipe up. They talk the whole 20 minutes, of course. Um, <laughs> now everyone else is just stunned listening to what is going on here. Um, uh, and then uh, someone takes the minutes, you know, it's a bit like what, what we sometimes did, and reports that back to the group. And it's actually their own view that they will present there uh, <laughs> and um and that's what happened uh, you know and several times and that was meant to be very interactive and novel <laughs> and everyone get their say and it, it was it was completely hopeless <laughs> so mm -hmm. <laughs> this is people try and fail miserably in making these things more engaging more discursive as gary says you know, I'm all, f and yeah, but look how rare it is. So there's us three, and we're drawn to it again and again. You know, we up for it. We, we. I want to hear what you have to say. It's so interesting to me. But there's only three of us, you know, and even of the initially motivated one, we have lost one. You know, who 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 thought this kind of intellectual discourse was actually, I think, you know, completely useless. Mm. Uh, would, wouldn't um, you know looked for something maybe much more personal and how can it help me in my life which is I think most people's interest you mm. know uh, help me out here I'm in trouble you know yeah. listen to me empathize with me and then give me some good advice perhaps only if I want to hear it but it, it, it this kind of of throwing around intellectually and you know this isn't everyone's cup of tea is it well, that, 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 well no i it, 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 
No, off to you, Guy. Uh, uh, I think this is a really important um, uh, distinction that, that, you know, that the people who are attracted to, to sort of, you know, uh, these particular topics, they're basically coming for, for personal reasons. I mean, I mean the, 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 the Dharma as, as it is taught um, uh, these days, it, it's, it's very much personal. And, and you know, and so it must be. You know, it's, it's you know that there's you know, we, we need to address you know our internal reactivity. We need to sort of you know uh, you know have, have a, a level of self awareness. Uh, so you know there is a, a very very strong element of you know you know looking at yourself and becoming aware. But that's only half the story. I mean, I mean, it's about your relationship to other people. We are not islands. None of us are islands. In fact, when, when people talk about self, non-self, I mean, I could say there is no self. There is only non-self because, I mean, there's only relationships. There are only connections. That's what's left after you take us away. You know, that, that uh, if, if, we are, if we are not concerned with, uh, with, with groups, with, with uh, connection, uh, with interconnections, that is where the Dharma lives, as far as I'm concerned. It's, you know, obviously, you need to, to address things personally. You need to sort of have awareness. But you then use that awareness to, to create connection, to create you know, uh, beneficial connections. Uh, so and I, and so you know, people do come to this with, you know, very, for very, you know, with very personal reasons, um, you know, trying to sort of you know, you know, perhaps make themselves better, make themselves less stressed, you know, trying to sort of you know, find some answers perhaps, perhaps on, a, on a very, very personal level. Uh, but, but that isn't, for, for me, that is not Dharma. That, that, is, that is obviously something that you need to do, but that's just the first step. The next step is, is, is you know, interconnection. Uh, what, why do we have the Dharma? We have the Dharma because we have to live as a society. And, and the problems we have are, are social problems. They're not, they're, they're really individual problems. The problems we have as individuals always come as a consequence of, of connections or, or lack of them uh, with, with other, other people and, and, or, or with other groups. So you know, this is a, something that's really quite fundamentally wrong with the way that uh, our Dharma is taught and that in that it over emphasizes the personal, the self, and, and just glosses over the whole reason for having the Dharma, which is basically that social interconnection and, and, and uh, you know, for me, the, the Dharma is about groups. It's not just about a person or, or something which is inside you. It's your connection with, with people and groups. I, mean, did, I think, does anybody see that? Is that? No, I agree absolutely and entirely. It's a, it was a very interesting and, and lucid explanation of... Um, of we could of, cut that out and yeah, that was play brilliant. it to myself every day. That was yeah. fabulous. Gary, was. that's you. <laughs> Spot on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and I need to be reminded of that. Really. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. I think cool. that that thing cool. about there is no and it, effectively, no, there is no self. There is there is only non-self because what we think of as self is what it is created by non-self. And it's not mm -hmm. I, and I if I would expand it perhaps to say it's not just community, it's not just humans, it's not just sapiens, it's everything. I mean, it's the, the the connections and the communication. I think perhaps connection rather than communication, because it's connection with the world and the and, and nature, the the and all of it, the environment, everything. All of those things are, to me, what what creates self. It's yeah. it's 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 all not, neither there out or in. It's just is. It's world. It's world. Heidegger's world. In, it's Heidegger's world, yeah. It's a world. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, world has yeah. many meanings, but in a yeah. way that he uses it, it is world. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. Uh, the individual, it doesn't even count. No. It's, no. 
it's it's just a it's a made up thing yeah and so you're absolutely right the fact that you know the, I'm not sure everybody, but a lot of people come to it because you say, yeah, actually, what you want is sort of therapy. And that's really, I suspect, not what we're interested in. Well, well I came to it, you know, I guess, because I wanted therapy. And that, that's, you know, and I got it. And that there's, <laughs> there's not a problem <laughs> with that. Is that. There is that personal element which you need to have first in order to sort of start creating your you know, healthy connections and, and uh, you know, dharma connections with, with, with the world. Um, uh, but, but I guess that's, I, I just think that, you know, because so many people have come to, to dharma from that starting point, from, from basically the, from, from starting points of stress or, 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 or just confusion or, or just wanting to sort of know more about themselves, so they they do come to it with with the, with that sort of uh, intent, uh, you know, but, you know don't perhaps don't really see that you know it, it really goes a lot lot further than that. That that really is the, just the first little step, <laughs> and 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 that the, what goes beyond that is way more important. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. <laughs> 